This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, episode 124, The Trinity of Luck. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. We are coming to you on the Day of Green. I just love St. Patrick's Day because of the all the green color, the focus on luck, and I love shamrocks. I had told this story uh, on an email recently about how whenever Tim was traveling and he had a really short connection or was maybe not going to get a seat or ha- was going to have problems making a connecting flight or his flight was in late he would contact me he'd send me a a note via text and say I may not make the plane and or I may not make my connection and I would send him three shamrocks I kid you not hand to God (laughs) I it worked every time and whenever I really want to wish somebody well and and have that full of intention and meaning I always send three shamrocks and I like the four leaf clover ones because I think three and four is 12 and that's more green and more growth and (laughs) I just love that and uh, so shamrocks have a a lot of special meaning for me I also love to wear green I love to see green I like to be in green and I'm excited to talk with you today about what you can do to improve your luck so here we are on St. Patrick's Day and this episode is going to be all about luck. In fact, we're going to be talking about the trinity of luck. But before we do that, I want to send a special thank you and send out a shout out to a wonderful listener. Her name is Nellie Diamond and she is writing from Great Britain. She posted an iTunes review with five stars and she titled it Easy Bite Size Feng Shui. I just love that bite size too. (laughs) It's like those, my one of my favorite uh, candy bars is Almond Joy or Mounds. And then when they, they have the two pieces, I love that bite size. It makes me think of a Mounds bar. Uh, she writes, Katie's Feng Shui podcasts are in perfect pi- bite-sized episodes. I highly recommend listening. She makes it easy to follow and I love her enthusiasm and wit. Well, thank you, Nellie Diamond. You just made my day and I'm sending you all kinds of shamrock thoughts and well wishes and lots and lots of virtual shamrocks your way and in fact I would just shower you with them if I could I don't know if you like green or you like shamrocks but I it's all sent with the best intention and I am sending those to you and I thank you now if you're listening to this on Facebook hey like this page Uh, just all you have to do is just click up at the top of the page and hit like and if you'd also do me a favor and share this page with somebody that you think a lot of and sending them a little luck their way never hurts you know one of the things that I I think that is one of the best ways to improve your own luck is to share luck or to send luck or to give luck to someone else. It's amazing how watering another's flower makes your own garden grow. And yep, you can tweet that (laughs) or put that on Facebook. All right, well, let's get started in talking about the trinity of luck. This is going to be a little bit of a a lengthier episode today. I know the last couple of weeks have maybe been a little bit shorter and not quite so long. So this is going to be good and meaty. And what better day than St. Patrick's Day to talk about luck. Well, let's get started. You know, a lot of people consider themselves lucky and some some people don't. Probably just as many who consider themselves lucky uh, have just as many people who who don't. Or maybe it's very few people who consider themselves lucky. I, I do think I'm lucky. How do you feel? Do you feel lucky? I think there are times, though, when you have more luck than others. And 
It may seem like luck only happens to certain people or those who are born under a lucky star, as they say in Mexico, yet others seem to have luck at their command. I've noticed that. Now in the West, luck is often viewed as something you either have or something you don't have. And the thinking is, is that you, if you don't have luck, you can't change it. But that's not the Eastern view of luck. In Asia, and in particular China, luck is viewed as a trinity. I love this too, because it made me look at luck a very different way. And there are three parts to luck when it comes to uh, understanding these, this trinity. The three parts are made up of heaven luck, earth luck, and man luck. Now together, heaven, earth, and man luck are the sum of your personal luck. So stick with me here. <laughs> the first part, heaven luck, is a type of luck that's based on who you're born to or where you're part of the world you grow up, your physical makeup, like your eye color, or your DNA. Now this is luck that isn't influenced by religion or charms or personal will. This is just easily summed up as your destiny or karma. Now you can't change who you were born to or change your DNA. And that's what makes heaven luck a part of the Trinity luck that's static. Now let's talk about the type of luck that you can actually um, change. And this is your earth luck. This is the kind of luck that literally surrounds you. This is what I love about feng shui. Now this is often represented by your home, what's outside of your door. Let's say for instance that you live in an area with lovely homes, but then you find out they've been built over a toxic landfill. Or maybe you have a view of a cemetery or a large ditch. The home you live in and the surroundings that it it's in have a great influence on your luck. Although you can't change a mountain in the distance, which is considered very auspicious, um, you can change the things if you're a hoarder or maybe you live in an overcrowded and cluttered home. Both of these things play a role in your earth luck. Now, earth luck is another way of saying feng shui. Feng shui can be applied to your office, your bedroom, your home, and your landscape. And it helps you to bring in good energy by maybe planting a beautiful yard or garden, keeping your home in good shape, beautifying it, cleaning it, and keeping the elements of earth, wood, water, fire, and metal in balance. And your earth luck is also about using feng shui to tap into your home's power centers and those energies that align with your relationships, your career, health, and income, or your family. Now this is luck you can use and adapt to foster opportunity, wealth, success, and happiness. I don't know about you, but that's a bit of good news, right? I think it's wonderful that you are actually able to affect this type of luck. Now man luck is changeable and it's a type of luck that you can greatly influence by choosing where you live or the way you live the way you decorate your home and the way you observe various time dimension changes in feng shui like the flying star feng shui like it's the year of the ox so this means this for a south house for example or this means uh, it has a different meaning if you have a north house or a east house now this type of man luck can be altered by your application of feng shui symbols personal feng shui your way of arranging your home landscaping or de decorating it and so that you can make your home uh, um, as, as harmonious as possible and the most productive as possible. Now, this type of luck that we're going to talk about next is the, type, is the type of luck called man luck. Now, Benjamin Franklin said that diligence is the mother of good luck. I love Benjamin Franklin, not just in my wallet, <laughs> but in history, because I think he must have been just a hoot. I think he, I just love uh, some of his perspective. And I thought, I think he was supposed to be a, a, like, you know, a big drinker and a carouser, but I think he'd be a whole lot of fun. <laughs> anyway, well, let's talk about your man luck. This is the luck that you have over your own personal actions. Now, some lack man luck because they don't believe in the idea that their actions can trigger energies that work in their favor. Some say that using feng shui appropriately and correctly is part of your man luck. And others believe that man luck is a direct result of the way you apply yourself in your life. So for instance, there are some people that choose to work hard. Some choose to study harder than maybe other students. They want to grow academically. 
whether you choose to save money, apply yourself in school, apply yourself on the job, take action on your own behalf, like investing money or, or, or keeping, being diligent at your job, all those kinds of things. These are all parts of your man luck. Man luck is the type of luck that has the great depth and potential because it's based on you and your actions. Now, those who maintain their health, their outlook, and their actions reflect that desire to be the best they can be for themselves. And no, this isn't a, <laughs> an army commercial, but it's true. You know, people who work, there are some people who work for themselves and some who work against themselves. Now, th- not surprisingly, these are the, the people that do work for themselves. They've got good man luck, yet there are others who let themselves maybe be taken advantage of. Maybe they surround themselves with negative people or even engage in negative self-talk. The, there, there may be people pleasers and, and others who don't grow because they stubbornly kind of stick to every wrong or every done, thing that's ever been done to them and they only feel good when they're victimized or helpless. Now these are man luck. These man luck people are are flawed, imperfect, and they they're full of their share of problems, just like those who don't have man luck. The difference is those with man luck choose to look at what they have, and look at what they can do to help themselves. They apply themselves to improve their lives. They take personal responsibility for their actions and create new paths, grow and uh, to strive for better. They realize that everything begins and ends with them and their actions. For those without man luck, the blame usually falls on other people, circumstances, their parents or their upbringing, almost anyone but themselves. Yet your man luck is your easiest luck to change. And I love that. I love the idea that you are in control of two thirds of your luck. This is the concept of the trinity of luck. So with your earth luck, where you choose to live, the way you choose to live, maybe do you keep a neat house? Do you, uh, or do you have uh, piles of paper and clothes? Do you, do you uh, landscape your home nicely? Do you apply yourself at your job or your studies? That kind of thing. Those types of activities, just knowing that that's two thirds of my luck and that I can apply that makes me feel really lucky because I'm in the I'm in the driver's seat. Isn't it nice to know that you can actually be in the driver's seat of two thirds of your luck? I love this concept, y'all. I really do. And I hope you like it too because if you can just shift your perspective about how you're in control of two thirds of your luck, I, it really can make a huge difference. Because you know, sometimes there's feng shui between your four walls and then there's feng shui between your two ears. <laughs> and I find that sometimes I gotta rearrange and uh, redirect some of that, that energy flow in between my two ears more than I do in my home. And in fact, actually daily. <laughs> it's one of those things that we have to keep working on, right? We have to work on ourselves and, uh, and sometimes working on, and work isn't really work. Sometimes working is the act of letting go just letting go. If you have a negative thought of your, about yourself or you say something negative to yourself, your self-talk, you can just just let it go and disallow it. You know, you don't have to go, don't say that to yourself. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. You don't want to do that. You want to go, okay, all right. I call myself stupid and I'm just going to let it go. So sometimes the work isn't really actual work. Sometimes when we have things to do for ourselves, it's the act of not doing something. <laughs> All right, um, that starts getting really zen, doesn't it? All right, well, let's jump right back into this th- ways that you can improve your man luck and your earth luck because those two areas are where we are under direct control. So let's get started. Now, when it comes to earth luck, let's talk about your house. You know, keep your home in good repair and make it attractive to you. A clean, beautiful home invites positive energy to your life. Do you ever notice how hopeful and optimistic you are when the house is really freshly cleaned? It really changes your outlook, doesn't it? So keeping a clean home and keeping a neat home is really important toward your outlook. Now, another good aspect about earth luck is how 
following feng shui can address those those energies that ebb and flow with the passage of time so like the the annual and the monthly feng shui so by working with the energies that where they're positive and bumping those up each year or holding down those negative energies when they're negative in other words you're working with the energies as they move and flow from year to year you also want to look for a home that has good environmental feng shui like a nice neighborhood or maybe it has pretty landscape features such as views of lakes or oceans or rivers mountains or hill these views bring beneficial energy Energy to you. So if you are out looking for a home to uh, move to, a new apartment, condo, something like that, look around. See if, what do you see out your window? Because if you can see a beautiful view, then you are going to have that beautiful energy coming into your home and coming into your life. Now we always want to try to, when it comes to feng shui, live in that that sort of armchair position of a home. And this is a, a, the classical idea that if your home is situated where you have a slight rise at the rear of your property, and that uh, you have some maybe some slight rises onto the left or the right, and then it's open in the front, that this is called the armchair position and if you can have a home that has that that rise at the rear a little bit like a uh, you know whether it's a little slope it doesn't have to have a slope but here's what we want to avoid is you don't want to have a house that completely falls away because when a house falls away at the rear of the house that's like sitting on a three-legged stool all day you can do it but you're going to get exhausted and that's what happens many times if you have a home that has no rear support this is that it's called the black tortoise support and that means it falls away at the rear and when that happens is that it's just life is a grind it's just difficult it's full of circumstances that come up that you have to manage and it feels like life is an uphill battle it's actually a downhill one <laughs> I think it's because you're all your energy is running downhill so we always want to try to find a home that observes that good feng shui in terms of the, its positioning in the landscape so that's that armchair position the other thing is you want to decorate your home your bedroom and your office with symbols that speak to you of aspirations of health and beauty and sometimes you it's not even about health and beauty you're looking around and you want to create a beautiful office a beautiful bedroom a restful one beautiful spaces have xing qi that's the most beautiful qi that's beautiful energy so when you have a nicely decorated home and I don't mean a palatial estate I mean it's a nice home and it feels good to you and it looks good to your eye and it's appealing to you it's amazing what that does to you inside it changes you and I've even seen people that I'm I'm gonna let me phrase this nicely they can be difficult people uh, some might even be in my own family <laughs> and but when they get to my home uh, you know maybe holiday dinners and things like that they get to our home it's it's interesting how the our home has an influence on them and I find that uh, many times if you have a home that's peaceful and attractive that uh, sometimes the it has an influence over the people who come there and even some of the more difficult friends or family members that we might have of course there and there are those that sometimes are just there's just no getting around them it doesn't matter how <laughs> how beautiful your house is but it does make a difference in terms of the way you feel and the way others feel I always say one of the problems with feng shui is that when you have really nice feng shui when you have guests who come visit they never leave <laughs> i mean you know after a while it's like you gotta go pack your bags <laughs> but it's it's true because what happens is people you just see their body language they relax they're comfortable they feel at home you can tell the difference between a guest who feels relaxed and at home in your space as, as opposed to someone who's maybe very uptight and that kind of thing now uh, the other thing that you want to always make sure that you do is to work on proper arrangement. That means the command position. I can't tell you how many times I've heard about people and talked to clients who have problems. Maybe it's 
uh, with money or relationships or even insomnia and they have a bed that is on the same wall as the door. It happens all the time. When a bed is not in a command position, you're not in command of life. And this is very important. The same thing is true with your desk. We always want to make sure that we're maintaining a good executive position, which is that nice solid wall behind us. And you can see the door to the, to the room easily and effortlessly. Because if you have to look behind you, or if you're in line with the door, that that is going to be defeating. You're going to be under this pressure quite a long time. So make sure that you follow good form feng shui and arrange your bed, your your living spaces, your desk with the command position. And this will help, you know. Now, let's talk about let's talk about your man luck. Uh, there's a quote that that says the amount of good luck coming your way depends on your willingness to act. Barbara Sher said that your willingness to act. And really, this is what boils down to a lot of people's 100% of their luck. <laughs> because they either just don't do anything or they are gung-ho. And you, you, you know the types, you know the, you know the folks, uh, you've got friends, maybe family members that they, they don't have any man luck because, well, they don't work at it, you know, and they don't apply themselves. And I don't want to say work like you got to beat your head against a stone. I'm not a believer in that. I have firm time off. In fact, after this podcast, I'm going to go work in my garden. Uh, yep, that's what I like to do. That's like I'm going to apply my woman luck. <laughs> I'm going to go put it, go dig in some dirt. All right, so let's talk about the things that you can do. What's important is that you look at what you can do. A can't do attitude will make every street your turn that you turn into a dead end. And it's easy to look at what's not possible. But if you can adopt the view of what's possible, it will help move your life forward. It's especially helpful when you feel stuck. So look at what you can do. Take responsibility for those actions and reactions. When you take responsibility for circumstances and make appropriate changes, it's amazing how your luck will shift. You know, I I always say, you know, it's so important to uh, admit if you're wrong. Uh, and I used to think a uh, long, uh, long time ago, I used to think that if I made a mistake, I was admitting some sort of personal weakness or a character flaw or something was wrong with me. And it's, it's not. None of it was true. And I found that I just would come out and say, well, that I goofed that up or what a dumb thing I just did <laughs> or said. And, and if you penalize yourself for mis- mistakes and you don't own up to them or you penalize yourself for them, you know, it's, it, that's not a good, that's not a good way to, uh, to grow and, uh, to make life better for yourself. So, you know, do take responsibility, but and, and admit when you're wrong, adhere to the truth and uh, take action in your life and and uh, and don't beat yourself up if you do make a mistake. It's really, really important to be your best friend. And that means outside in, in the world out here and inside in your head in here. So don't be beating yourself, oh, that's so stupid or you're an idiot or whatever that you say. All right, let's talk about giving yourself reinforcement. So when you make a change and you follow through on an action, praise yourself, recognize your treatment, your achievement. S- tell yourself, good job, Katie, or wh- whatever. <laughs> your name is, you know, admire yourself. I think that that's one of the best things that you can do for changing your luck is, is just looking at what all you have done. And another thing is that has always stuck out with me was, um, there was a, a motivational, um, speaker who, his name was Brian Tracy, and I think he's passed on and, but he had wonderful, wonderful, uh, I used to listen to his CDs and tapes, uh, by Brian Tracy, Tracy. And I remember him saying, usually for most people, there's one thing standing in the way of their happiness, one thing in their life. And if they would just correct that one thing, it would make all the difference. And maybe that one thing is I need a better job. Or maybe that one thing is I'm miserable in my relationship. Maybe the one thing is I've got to give up smoking or stop drinking or um, being dependent, whatever it is. If you can take a step toward tackling a long standing issue in your life, uh, it will make a huge difference. So focus on that power of one. 
One is a very significant number in feng shui, and I've written an article about it. So if you want to go and check out The Power of One, uh, you can find that on my website. Just do a quick search on The Power of One. I'm not sure if I've done a podcast about it or not. I think I have. But one is the the number of water. It's the number of movement, of transformation. You can just do that one thing and you know what it is. What no, You know what it is. If you could do that one thing that is standing in the way, whether that's get it out of the way, conquer it, tackle it, begin a program to overcome it, whatever it is, it is amazing what that can do for you. I know some somebody that they moved to this one town. You know how hard that is to move. And they were miserable there. They hated the town. They hated their new house. They hated the town. They were miserable. They hated it. They didn't want to sell it. The house they had just bought, they didn't want to move again because, you know, how fun is that? <laughs> but th- what they did was they bit the bullet and said, we're miserable. And are we going to just stay here for the next, you know, 20 years and be miserable? Or we just bite the bullet and go where we know where we were happy? And that's what they did. And I have so much admiration for that. Uh, it's... um sometimes just taking that first big step and and changing that one thing it can make a big difference the other thing is you know uh, watching that watching the victimhood and uh, helplessness these are traps that anybody can fall into and it becomes a drug that will rob you of your self-respect it's when you have the ability to see your life clearly and own your own life it it's amazing what that can do for your luck and i takes you away from being at the mercy of life because then you become in the driver's seat of your own life and I love that if it's always somebody else then somebody else is in the driver's seat of your life and that is not going to raise your luck profile in any way the other thing I want to talk about is enthusiasm cool disinterest blah demeanor non-responsive passive aggression this has become sort of socially acceptable and approved behavior and i despise it (laughs) you know it's it it's become where the enthusiastic excited person is what's wrong with them you know we look at them with the side eye and you know i think having enthusiasm and zeal and excitement is makes you have a life of zeal and excitement and enthusiasm when you're just sort of this you know keep it all under control keep it all cool that means that you have a life of cool disinterest in my opinion and blah experiences and this numbed kind of living tap into your excitement find wonder again be enthusiastic i always say that disinterested people are a disinterested life (laughs) and you want to be an interesting person be interested be curious i can't tell you how much my life and luck has changed just by engaging other people and being engaged with life it can make all the difference between this humdrum day after day march that we do and a life of variety and excitement and ambitions all right well let's leave you here with your three tips for today tip number one is apply your earth luck that means feng shui apply feng shui to your home based on time look for beautiful views if you're looking for a new home and maybe if you don't have a pretty view create one do it with your gardening maybe find something that you can put out your window a new tree or something that will beautify your views anything that lifts your energy and lifts the beauty that you're surrounded by is great earth luck tip number two apply yourself make sure you work on that one thing remember one thing it has power of transformation i know that even if you don't have a major issue maybe it's or health or weight or or an addiction or or a bad relationship maybe you just have something that you would like to change pick one thing at a time or something that you would like to add to your life pick that one thing and do it with gusto and you will do great things toward changing your man luck tip number three 
Fall in love with life. Find something that enthuses you. Be generous. Be excited. Be interested. It's amazing how life treats you the way you treat it. And if you go in with enthusiasm and excitement and thrill in your mind and in your heart, it's amazing how that excitement and thrill comes into your life. Thanks for being with me today, listening to the Trinity of Luck. I wish you all the luck here on St. Patrick's Day and send you a shower of virtual shamrocks. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next week.